we'll take a couple of steps forward if that's all right, and me and Mary will be on either side. Jeff Bodman, recovering from coronavirus, is about to attempt to walk again for the first time in yeah, two months. We're going to stand up like we've been practicing. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Steady and stand. Good push. Well okay. done. Brilliant. To the middle handle, Jeff. Oh, yeah. That's it. Okay, so just take your time now. Let your head Eight down. weeks ago, I, uh, I found myself in intensive care and uh, it's been one hell of a journey. Brilliant. A journey which began on the 16th of March. Not long after attending the Cheltenham Racing Festival, he was admitted with coronavirus to the University Hospital of Wales in Cardiff, whose mass pandemic training programme we filmed two days later. OK, I'm coming in to take over chest compression. Nearly two months on, we return. Simulation now the terrible reality and how to restore suspended services, the urgent concern. It's definitely going to be a challenge, almost, which is as big a challenge as the initial COVID problem. And in the midst of it all, what the body representing physiotherapists predicts will be a tsunami of need. Couldn't be put these steps together three days ago. No. Jeff, who's 56, a former nurse, now painter and decorator, inches his way across the room, but it's exhausting. That's it. Gently okay. down. Even being on a ventilator, a life support machine, for hours can affect the way your muscles work. It can decrease your muscle mass by huge amounts, much more than starvation and through being in space, for example. In a neighbouring ward, the physio team are helping Jane Loftus with stepping. Another of the 750 coronavirus patients admitted to this hospital alone. You see how surprising how hard it takes it out of you and it just wipes you right out. The fatigue element is, is something that we've been really struck with. So these patients are absolutely wiped out. If you think about the, the worst virus you've ever had, how unwell you feel, they feel like that for days if not weeks. And that limits our rehabilitation sessions because we have to make them shorter. And nowhere is that more acute than in intensive care. By the PPE donning station where newly qualified nurses now work. Lovely. Thank you very much. We're taken into the so-called COVID red zone. Quieter than before, but still immersed in the devastation of this virus. It takes a speech and language therapist, three physios, a nurse, and a small adjustment to this patient's tracheostomy tube for him to achieve a single word. Hello, how are you? Only now can his lungs support his voice. The team is led here by Gemma Jones. <laughs> it's really lovely to hear your voice. It's really strong. When they're awake, they kind of awake with quite a bang and then they haven't got a voice because their, their voice box has become swollen and damaged because of the prolonged intubation. So they're, whilst they're trying to communicate, they can't because it, nothing's coming out. The unit psychologists are noticing higher than anticipated delirium in some of the COVID patients. Their dietitians see more feeding intolerances. The complexity of the challenge compounded by the extreme fatigue caused by the virus. And on a scale, warns the Chartered Society of Physiotherapists, foreshadowing, in their words, a tsunami of rehabilitation needs. It's going to take a kind of army of AHPs, allied health professionals, um, OT, speech and language therapy, dietetic, physio, to kind of help with these people's psychology, help these people get back to a work life worth living um, post ICU. Is that army currently there? <laughs> It's recognised that it's an area, she and colleagues went on to say, which needs to be addressed. Are you worried about keeping this up for months on end? <laughs> Trying not to think about it too much. Um, I'm, I'm worried about um, the impact that it's going to have on the patients that are coming through without COVID. Just our normal patients that we've seen every day, um, our services when they return, and they're going to have to return at some point, are going to be stretched much thinner, I think, and that concerns me. Did you remember yesterday we were practising that gripping? OK. So A physio now slowly there. helps Jeff Bodman okay. with his grip. So we're going to reach forwards. He had a stroke in intensive care, 
blood clots not uncommon among their COVID patients. Good. And now see if you can just bring it up to your mouth then. Learning to try and act normal, even though you know you can't. And a lot of it, a lot of it is time consuming. The, the goal, obviously, I want to get fit and healthy and well again. But my first aim is to see my wife and family as soon as possible. I miss them terribly. Push from there. Mm -hmm. Ready? Full of admiration for the hospital, but keen to join the thousands of others now leaving the COVID wards for families they've not been able to see. Many with needs as complex as their bodies and minds are frail. The magnitude of the task facing the UK's community rehabilitation services, immense. Top man. It's been a hell of a journey. One hell of a journey. But I think we're getting there. Thank you. Well, we were filming in the hospital all day yesterday, and you really get a sense of just how many different specialisms are needed for the care of some of these coronavirus patients, many of whom have severe physical deconditioning and psychological issues. And, of course, it's not just about those who are in intensive care. There is potentially a huge amount of demand building up for physiotherapists, for occupational therapists and rehabilitation teams in the community. UK government say they're addressing this. The Welsh government announcing an extra £10 million in funding recently. But the view of the Chartered Society of Physiotherapy is that even before the pandemic, community provision was inadequate, that it must be, rehabilitation must be an un unmissable part of the recovery plan and that urgent action uh, can only suffice now. And Andy, the Welsh Government has published its, what it calls its roadmap for exiting the lockdown. You've been looking at that, haven't you? Tell us about that. Yes, more a sense of direction of travel than a timetable based on a traffic light system, red, red, amber, green, so different aspects of Welsh life will open up in different phases. We're told we're in the red phase at the moment. Read into it, it's a complex system, but the reality, says Mark Drakeford, the First Minister of Wales, is that it is complicated. That didn't stop the Welsh Conservatives calling it a road map to a cul-de-sac, not recovery. Uh, accusations of lack of details, of dates as we've seen in England. But the message from the Welsh Government is it's an ongoing process and any decisions will be underpinned first and foremost by public health concerns. Andy, thanks very much.